Sadda, <coughs> Good morning. Since last night, we continued to look at that having achieved this precious human rebirth, this rebirth that constitutes 18 freedoms and endowments, this rebirth, that independence upon which we can accumulate the causes that will lead to further excellent rebirths and even cultivate paths, mental paths that will lead to liberation and enlightenment. This wonderful rebirth that we've each achieved, this is impermanent. This remarkable opportunity that is so rare and difficult to achieve will come to an end. So the chapter we are looking looking at is to bring up, uh, we need to engage in to bring about this determination that I must strive to utilize this opportunity before it ends. Because if I don't use it now, then when can I hope for such an opportunity like this to come again? And the determination to come to is to engage in the uh, process of accumulating virtue and purifying non-virtue. The first reflection then establishes just how exceptional a rebirth this is, that it's rare because it was so difficult to achieve and that so few beings have it. Also, that what can be achieved is something great, therefore it is valuable. But this opportunity will end. That is certain. Not only will it definitely end, but the time and manner in which our end will come, that is completely uncertain. So this then is what we started to look at last night, that this lifespan of, of, of human beings, this is indefinite in that some, are short, some beings have a short lifespan, some humans have a long lifespan. So not, but not only is our, the lifespan amongst humans uncertain, but the sequence in which we, we will die, this too is uncertain. It is not that the old necessarily die before the young. It's not that the ill necessarily die before the healthy. We know this is not always the case. So this reflection 
serves to, to, to lead us, to uh, bring us closer to this stable determination to utilize whatever it is that remains of this opportunity, to utilize it well and express the entirety of this life through the Dharma. And <laughs> ね、でにき、にゃめ What we need to have very clear to us is that the purpose behind this meditation of coming to recognize, firstly, the certainty of our death, and secondly, the uncertainty of the time and manner of our death, and as well as how very easily it can come about, is that it leads us to to see that if I do not accumulate the causes that will lead to further accident rebirths or accumulate the causes that will lead to the cultivation of a mental path leading to liberation and enlightenment. How can I hope to ever do so? How can I hope to fulfill the potential that comes with this precious human rebirth? Therefore, I commit to striving to accumulate virtue, in other words, to strengthen our habituation to wholesome minds and to purify, in other words, to break my habituation to afflictions. So the purpose, the very purpose of this meditation is to produce a positive mind, a powerful mind that is focused on cultivating the Dharma. Therefore, the outcome of this meditation is a positive, determined mind. <laughs> Internet Kazakorongi Gansa Dinashi, 
ตินทารวาตะทัมจิกิมบอมาชะซานดุสันจิกิมบอมาดุติเตนเคบะจินจิเรดินเนซาตะดุสุนิซัมตังโกเรดินเนซาตะดุสุนิยาเกตังโกเ
ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、ま、
All that is certain is that death has and will come for all. Some die young, some die in middle age, some die in old age. And as, the, and as said previously, it is not a set sequence as to who will die first. So we know some humans die very young, perhaps in the womb or shortly after birth. Others live to a ripe old age, and many die somewhere in between. And when that death will come is entirely unknown. And in, for, for animals, this is also very much the case as well. In particular, as so, so many are taken for food before they live out the, the full length of their lifespan, either they are slaughtered for human consum consumption or they are caught and eaten as prey. So it's, it's so common then for beings not to live out their full potential lifespan, but to die before. And the reasons for death are so varied. Ramatan Karpa continues, have died from sudden internal or external causes of death. The term sudden, we can um, take to, to refer to something unexpected. So perhaps it would be a, 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 a natural disaster, such as an earthquake or floods or bushfire, or it could be uh, a violence, whether between nations or between individuals, or whether from, from accidents. We, we hear about these things often. And when we do, we should recognize that this can happen to me as well. This is what we need to take to heart. <coughs> we should train like this, as Lama Tsongkhapa says, think about this over and over again, so that our spontaneous response, when we hear about the death of another, or we, we see a, a dead animal, for example, is that I too am subject to this. So not just to relate to it as something that goes on in the world, but recognize that it hasn't yet happened for me. This, this expre expression, think over and over again, this is how to approach meditation, to develop habituation to this way of thinking. In this case, that my life can too end at any time in an unexpected manner. Yang Shukchon these meditations build one upon the other and 
as one slowly uh, uh, gets guided through these meditations, you should be building on what you've meditated on previously and adding now what is being newly covered. So in the point previous to this, where we looked at the certainty of death, there it's recognized that intellectually we all know that we'll die. We don't live under the delusion that death will never come to me. But we do live under the delusion, or the, the, the delusion ex expressed as this innate belief, that we have time. Yes, death will come, but not for some time. And we think this, we act in this way from when we're young, throughout our middle age, and even in old age. Always thinking, there's still time. And it's because of this ignorance of grasping at the permanence of our situation, at the unchanging uh, uh, nature, at, at our situation as being unchanging, that our focus is on achieving transitory pleasures and trying to overcome temporary problems. So we focused on the immediate gratification as well as establishing ourselves in this world, not recognizing that we are actually merely passing through. This body has only been briefly gained. This life passes quickly like a steep mountain waterfall. But if we reflect in the way that's presented here, we will come to recognize the certainty, the inevitability of our death, and that it can come at any time and in any manner, not just the expected. And by doing so, so this will challenge and weaken our ignorance that grasps, grasps at our situation as being unchanging, as being permanent. And to add to, to, uh, to this is the coming reflection, which is that when death comes, our next rebirth is determined by the causes we have created. And we have many causes that we have created in this life, as well as from previous lives, that may well lead to rebirth in the lower realms. So this then leads, leads to a sense of urgency to use this opportunity well, this rare and precious opportunity to not let it go to waste and rather accumulate the causes that will lead to not only excellent rebirths, but progression towards enlightenment. So in this way, by reflecting as guided, a, a deep and abiding determination will be developed to utilize what remains of this opportunity, to utilize it well. Mm -hmm. あれ、あの、じゃあ、ね、で、エンジェリー、あの、ネムチンエメレス、メビ、メビ、キムチンギャルスンチャレヤン、エバヨマレセジ、ユムチェシュサワジ。だでね、カルシュヤレスね、デザ
Anda sordi la, semi yemi ki ne ba mang de, se dang an zi ki sordi la, ne ba be mang bu yor es, chi ki chi wi ki mang bu yor ba des. Di ka des ne sordi la, ne ya kare se ne, semi yemi ba, yevi ki ne ba mang bu, semi yemi ba da bine an zi la, an zi sam ta na, bine an semi yemi ba, mi ne ba, ke yi ne ba, ne dun jo ki ne ba, o di ne ki ne ba mang bu yor es, chi sa semi yemi ba ne ba. Sim mebe neba dele, sim meba dele, sachu melongi jipe neba ta. Ande chiki chunjiri ki neba, ande neki tone, ande chiki neda, ande neki gengi neba mangu yungu ori eche, jisang sim yemi ki neba mangu te se tiso. So dele neba be mangu chiwi ki mangu yore, sim yebe neba chiki mangu yore, ne sim meba ya, sim mebe ki dene ki chunwa la soba dene ki neba chi mangu yore eche, sim yebe neba mangu te eche. Now, Matsukapa starts by saying there are many harm, harmful in, uh, influences, both the animate and the inanimate. So the animates or inanimate or those with consciousness and those without consciousness. So those that have consciousness would include people and gods and uh, spirits and animals. And those without consciousnesses that can, can lead to death would, would refer to the um, external elements being in, in, um, not in harmony, so natural disaster, or the internal elements not being in harmony, leading to illness. Or it would, um, the uh, causes without consciousness would include accidents and violence. So there are many harmful influences, both those with consciousness and those without. And the other thing is that since so you be a semi ever get new about the category of sinners or the other me than me my MB don't you get seven thousand and as a me as a little bit of a child you were what I make it and as you check it and my Japanese so solid so much yeah you were a demand be that check it and banjo manjo dedicated come on Google also about that job while also what didn't get on it don't I never and I'm going to do so let me but you can go on me then it made in the show me down Mi mayin ba si de da, la da, lu da, yane di sa la so ba, nde te ki, mang bu ki, yane ji ki, mi mayin be lam, dun do mang bu yoro, a di su ki su, ni bu yore, yane ji mi da mi mayin ba, dun, dun ji ki, cha wa se, yane su, nyo ba, nyo ba ki wore, yane se. Nde di su, dun ji ki se, yane di, la da, lu da, nde ni ki, yane ki se, la mayin la so ba, nde ni ki, nyo ba ti ki su, nyo ba yung wore, yane se, nyo ba ti su, sim jane, yane su, nyo ba ki hindi, yane se. Think deeply about how it is threatened, so this life is threatened by human beings and non-human evil spirits. So life, our, our life can be taken by other human beings through uh, perhaps through either uh, a violence, whether uh, from one person to another or between communities or nations, as well as um, violence in, in terms of robbery. Life can be taken in these ways for really no valid reason. Life can also be taken by um, animals, and by unseen beings such as gods, nuggers, and spirits. So these would be uh, the, those which are animates that can lead to the, the unexpected ending of one's life or the ending of one's life um, uh, before one's lifespan is, is uh, lived out. Life can be taken in any one of these ways. <laughs> Do me say so that I've been around that that Millie didn't you go right that the men began to do really in that you go right been to do some jelly in there do you do you think you really never chip in it yeah no which is a man that they'll yeah never check in me you never see or a and they are going to get that do you done yeah done and the corners the same gender but you get and it's in so you can you never change actually sometime and you really never check on them man was usually at all and the demon began to get so meba ini, anda jadi benda culu aja tu cut, jadi ni orang macam tu cuci kian je, anda ni ke cuka mian lah sebab tu cuka mula dia konsol di solan ni macam ya, yang je culu culu aja tu jadi ni ke cuci topa cair dia di solan ni macam ya, anda korang tu lelul le, ni dah malah pergi ni macam, sebenarnya tu orang ni dia yang gol, jadi ni cakap dia tu yang rik sih, dia tu yang rik, dia ni ke dah tu sih ni. Jadi dah jujur juga mungkin orang ada ni kepada yang anda kengguru sura tadi ni tuan jujur lah so pada ni lah so pada yang anda mahu tuan yang di situ sama dengan ni dia ni lah ni apa sih mungkin orang ada sih jujur jujur su jujur 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 lu sura ni apa tu mesti sesuatu sama dengan tu sih ni 
Dinner Number one, Kappa continues by saying how certain kinds of animals endanger one's body and life by harming it in many ways. So this living here, we know in this country, this certainly ha can happen from snakes on spiders and so forth. But this can also happen when one is on holiday in other countries. That's something unexpected can happen. An animal can take one's life, perhaps just something small like a mosquito bite, but leading to illness. And now also in, in these modern times with climate change, this having an impact on the natural environment, forcing uh, animals to interact with humans in ways um, uh, not a, a bit different from before, also will lead to people uh, losing their lives unexpectedly. So this, this reflection, whilst one certainly can uh, think or reflect on the impact on others, in particular for animals, their life being taken by other animals is so much more common than for humans. The, the meditation here is primarily on oneself, coming to recognize the vulnerability that we are in, that the, or the precarious state that uh, we as an individual are in, so as to bring about this sense of urgency and determination. <laughs> Chiquinetamaraligo, <laughs> Finally, and how both internal illnesses and external elements can cause harm. So here, when things go out of harmony, there can be uh, from in the external world, the, there um, there can be droughts or there can be floods. There can be um, excessive cold or excessive heat. So there are many ways in our external world that by the elements going out of harmony, one's life can be threatened and taken. Likewise, when the inner uh, elements are out of harmony, illness follows, and this can lead to death too. So there are so many ways that, now in this case, the inanimate can lead to the ending of our life. Doesn't
in this part here, as well as really throughout this, this chapter, what we are trying to wake up to is that this precious human rebirth is not stable. We relate to this body and in particular this life as if, as if it is stable. But this is an ignorance, an ignorance of grasping at permanence. And it's, we can recognize it when we experience surprise when change unexpectedly comes. But change isn't unexpected if one is under, if one understands impermanence well, because all change is, is a reflection on causes leading to results. This is the process of change. But because we grasp at things as permanent, we th think back to times gone by and, and, and events as if they, uh, and give them a, a validity, a solidity rather, a solidity that they do not possess. And likewise, when we think about our future, we give that a solidity that it doesn't possess. This is an expression of this ignorance grasping at permanence. This is what we are trying to shake up, to recognize that this, this uh, life we have is very vulnerable. It is not stable, despite that how we are habituated to relating to it as if it is. And the purpose then of this reflection is so that we turn away from the meaningless. We turn away from our current obsession with attaining temporary pleasures, enjoying those temporary fleeting pleasures, and our, all our worry about problems, which will soon be gone. And rather, focus on accumulating the causes for what is worthwhile. So this presentation is specific for those who are interested in the Dharma, who think about the Dharma. For the average people in society, this really isn't of much use for them, because for them, they grasp at permanence, the meaningless, uh, the, the pleasures of this life, to them, have this exaggerated meaning, and they strive for them with a hope that they will somehow last. But for those who have an interest in, in the Dharma, who want to live a meaningful life and strive towards achieving, um, uh, fulfilling their potential, these reflections are indispensable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lama Tsongkhapa continues, Furthermore, your body must be formed from the four elements, and since these also harm each other by becoming out of balance, if they expand or diminish, they will cause illness and deprive you of your life. <laughs> Our, our body is comprised of the, the four elements, those of earth, water, uh, fire, and uh, wind energy. Shempa 
So for those who are actually here in, in sitting here in good health, your mm -hmm. elements will be in, in harmony, in balance. The elements of earth, water, uh, fire or heat and wind energy. But when one um, expands, others will necessarily diminish or can be expressed in the alternative way. As one loses um, strength, the others will be proportionately stronger. This then is when our inner balance, the balance within our, our body is lost and illness follows. <coughs> So in this way we come to see that these elements that are both the cause of our life can also become the cause for our death. And then Lama Tsung Kappa continues, they exi exist together with you, so even though your body and life appear to be stable, they cannot be relied upon. Lodia, <laughs> So when we think or uh, we want to when we want to say where we are, we will say where we are in dependence on where our body is. And moreover, the way we relate to this body is with this, with, is as if it were stable. But this is not the case. We relate to our body with stability and hence our surprise when, it, when we receive an unwanted diagnosis. This body is not something reliable, it's not something that is suitable to be relied on. Why? Because this, uh, such minor causes, one amongst many, leads to our cells, for example, going out of harmony, and illness, perhaps fatal illness, following. So reflecting like this, we come to see that this body is not at all reliable or suitable to relate to as if it were stable. <coughs> To me, Gordy, Gigi, Yamber Jason, Pelo or Jeban, a guy I made of us. Then Lama Tsongkhapa quotes from the Buddha in, from his great final Nirvana Sutra The discernment of death, I've just added one word, uh, the discernment of death is that this life constantly surrounded by many hostile enemies, deteriorates each moment, and that there is nothing that increases it. So, 
as is, is usually the case, Lama Tsongkhapa draws in quotations to um, that serve as a source for what he has composed to make it clear that what he's saying is valid. It's not just something based from his, his own thoughts. So the Buddha says, the discernment of death is that this life, constantly surrounded by many hostile enemies, deteriorates each moment. So this expression deteriorates each moment shows that this process of aging begins immediately when life is, is taken and that one is moving moment by moment ever closer to death and furthermore, and that there is nothing that increases it. So this being surrounded by many hostile enemies refers to what's just been pre presented. The animate and inanimate can lead to the unexpected ending of this life. This perception of stability, therefore, is completely deluded. It's not based in reality. There are so many causes that can lead to our unexpe the unexpected ending of this life. From the precious garland. And I've just again added a little bit. We live amid the conditions that cause the Lord of Death, like a butter lamp in a tumultuous gale. <laughs> we live uh, amid the conditions that cause the Lord of Death. In other words, as we've, we've seen, there are so many conditions that constantly both surround us as well as are within us and surrounding us in the natural world and surrounding us or the world without consciousness and causes for our potential death within um, beings with consciousness. So we are surrounded by uh, conditions that can bring the end of this life. So this reflection leads to the recognition uh, of being con consistently aware of the, or being aware of the constant possibility of our life ending. This isn't something when uh, this isn't something rare, but there, we are cons consistently surrounded by causes that could lead to the end of this life. And therefore we are, the second line, like a butter lamp in a tumultuous gale. This reflection then serves to remind us that not only is this life not stable, it's incredibly vulnerable. It does not take much for it to end. Not only do we relate to ourselves as if we uh, are unchanging, but we relate to ourselves with a strength that we really do not possess. possess. Just a slight cause can lead to the ending of this life. <laughs> Mangbo 
Lama Tsongkhapa is presenting these quotations to show his sources. And the purpose of showing sources is so that we can be confident in what's presented here. And why he wants us to be confident in what's presented here is that his innermost wish that we follow in his footsteps and the footsteps of all the great practitioners and enter into the Dharma. And this, this topic is the entry point into the Dharma, in particular, this general point here, the second root, to recognize that we are con continuously surrounded by conditions that can lead to the ending of this life, both those within us as well as those surrounding us, and those surrounding us, both those with consciousness and those without. Therefore, our situation is not at all stable. It is not at all certain. We live amidst this, uh, this uncertainty with this lack of stability. And this is what is guiding us to come to recognize. Ngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngāngā
These two minds that we are, need to cultivate, these two roots, the recognition of the certainty of our death and the uncertainty of the time of death, they challenge the, the view that, yes, I know I'll die, but I have time. And this uh, lack of awareness that our death can come at any moment. So of these two wrong per uh, perceptions, it is the first one that is very dominant for us this view that I have time. We make our plans for years to come, perhaps even decades, thinking of paying off our mortgage and so forth. But the reality is, and, and the way we relate to these plans is with an expectation we will fulfill them. This is how we express this, this view that we still have time. And this is a much stronger view for us than the understanding that only comes sporadically, that I'm actually quite vulnerable, that I do need to, to take care. And the way to trans, oh, sorry, and then the, the outcome of living as we have been is that we have the imprints for an appreciation of the Dharma. We have the imprints for an aspiration to cultivate the Dharma within. But we only do so sporadically. And when we do, with quite a lot of distraction. And what are we distracted to? The pleasures and problems of this life. This is why the, the, the end, we have not yet entered into the Dharma. This is why the cultivation of the minds of Dharma within have been impeded. So the very solution to become the person we long to be, a, a, a practitioner who has cultivated these wonderful qualities in the Dharma within, that very entranceway lies in this chapter because it's through developing this deep recognition that this precious opportunity I've attained is drawing ever closer. Every day is a day closer to when it ends. Every period of a day is that much time less that I have to accumulate virtue to strengthen my habituation to wholesome ways of thinking. And how much time I have left is completely unknown. Even if I have created the causes for a lengthy lifespan, whether I live that out is completely unknown. Because the reality is, I am like this uh, butter lamp in a, in a gale. It does not take much for life to end. Intellectually, I know this to be true, but this is what we need to come to recognize for ourselves. And this is the very doorway by which we can enter into the Dharma because when these minds have been reflected on well so they become deep within, we have a focus, a determination, and we can easily then overcome distraction. We then will always have the time for the Dharma. We will have time for formal practice. And not only that, when we are engaging in the various activities that we do need to engage in, we will have conscientiousness, mindfulness, and vigilance to ensure that our mind is not coming under 
the influence of the afflictions, but remains virtuous, then we will be living a life of the Dharma and we'll quickly make sp uh, a, a spiritual progress. We'll quickly develop the causes that will lead to excellent rebirths and the cultivation of a path towards liberation and enlightenment. This, this topic here, by becoming deeply habituated to it, is the way to turn away from what is meaningless and to embrace what has meaning. And another ジェルムチンアンドレカルジャトチゴラセネ、ダンアンドサムナナリア、シギマレ、タコジュニゴデグレ、センベサムナチゴレス。アネンアンドレア、ネ、ケディシンエバヨマダ、セミシドグレ
tapo tempo yunyu bu chigmare sembe samlodi notori se samlodi notori ba ni tuje de la ta dusione ke ma bu chiwi ke dusos ma bu yore se che de dus chawo ta in the second of the three roots the reflection is on recognizing just how vulnerable we are and how there are so many conditions that surround us external as well as internal within us that can lead to our death and this is something as we go about our, our day to be aware of and and the reason to do this is to shake up this this feeling of stability of security that we have this feeling almost of invulnerability this is completely mistaken and by thinking like this it's not that we bring our death any closer but what we do bring closer is the attainment of a path a path leading to enlightenment Re recognizing the reality of our actual situation will give us the determination to let go of what's not important and to focus on what is is a dangara zugula ashi dugura geti singe ba yo mara sembe samlo chungju du yo ba di yumje gare da na da di yumje mangu yo ro wa yumje mangu yo re nangara zule shi dugure geti singe ba yo mara sembe samlo chan chungju jingara zugula yo re che di yo bi ge da yumje ro je da san mangu yo ro wa so we do have within us so this isn't a completely new um news to us that we will die and that when our death will come is unknown this we do know but it's not very dominant in us and this is why we need to use many reasons to challenge what is dominant this misperception just now the you but you can see got how we were saying now the tears need in the main god do the question do what then i see do what some day much again this it could they get on the mentor she had to go Then <laughs> So so ki shiye ki sun ki chini ma shi ye don da chi wo de de so so ha shi du gure sembe samlo ji be ta ru wa ji san samlo ji me na di ji gu ma ru wa ji san ha shi du gure sembe ka la di ze ne ka la di ni ye ji ne ha shi du gure sam ji ji san de de ji ni ni ji mang bo an ngan ji ki pa su du du ka lu ya shi ngan ji da han wo de ya wo ji gun du gure ka san ni sem ji ki da bu da de ni ge ni ye ki gure sam ji de sun ki di ni ye ba ji na ka ge ro san di ji ji shi du gure sembe samlo ji wa ji san de ni ye san ngan ji ki ni mi ji zhang ma la ดูโลชบตาชาวเราก็สังขารที่ชื่อดูเลยเสร็จทีนี้ชาวเราไปไปชาวชิมบุยเนี่ยสิบสิบกว่าก็สังชาวชิมบุยเนี่ยอันนี
this understanding, to bring it in accordance with reality, because it is still very weak. So how can we say with certainty that we do have this understanding? Well, for example, if you're feeling a little off, maybe you have pain or maybe just something isn't right, and you've perhaps felt this way a little while, one knows not to leave it, because this could be a sign that there's something quite wrong with you, and therefore we go and see a doctor. Likewise, we also know that we need to look after our health, and therefore we need to try and have a, a healthy diet, because if, if our diet is poor, we know this will, will increase the likelihood of, of illness and therefore death. And so too, with exercising, if, if those who enjoy exercise, this is very easy, but for others, it takes some effort. But again, one knows one has to do so to try and keep the, the, the body stable and try and stay healthy and, and well. Moreover, we know that when the, the, the weather uh, changes, perhaps unexpectedly, and, and it becomes cold, we need to put on clothes. Because if we, we cold, maybe um, um, uh, illness will come. Or likewise, if we are walking in the bush, we need, know we need to take care, just in case it's a hot day and we see snakes, we need to be aware. Or if we're driving with, with a partner or a friend, and they're driving, and they're quite distracted, we, we will ask them to please watch the road because we know otherwise we are in some danger. So we are aware that this life will end and that it can come in an unexpected manner. But this recognition is still very weak within us. It's still too weak to challenge our procrastination, to challenge our distraction to temporary pleasures and problems. So therefore, we need to reflect using many reasons. <laughs> Sammit and it's because we have this understanding that death will come and it can come unexpectedly, we can easily build on this. But we can, but whilst we can easily build on this, we do need to apply ourselves repeatedly to this reflection, both in formal settings as well as to keep it alive and present as we go about our day. It's indispensable. Otherwise, the Dharma will never arise within. It will stay at the level of aspiration. So when we engage in, in the reflection, it's also important to, to bear in mind what the, t the topic that will follow here, which is that when death comes, we can only go in one of two directions. And this is the case for all of us. If we've created the causes, we will stay in a, an excellent rebirth, such as this. Or if we've created the causes, we'll fall into the lower realms. Those are the two directions that all us ordinary beings proceed in. Being aware of this reality in relation to ourselves, 
will serve as a stimulus to utilize this life well. Because when we recognize that this life will end and will end at any time, and the next rebirth, we may well not have the same opportunity that we have now. And then there will be nothing that we can do. We will be more committed to utilize what remains well of this life. In particular, when we see with perfect clarity for ourselves that there is for us the possibility of taking rebirth in a body of an animal or the body of an unseen being in the lower realms, this will add to our determination to refrain from non-virtue, particularly to refrain from coming under the influence of the afflictions. Moreover, we'll combine this with the wish to accumulate virtue, in other words, to strengthen our habituation to wholesome ways of thinking, virtuous ways of thinking. So this, this, this additional part of the meditation, recognizing, recognizing that there is the real possibility for us to fall into the lower realms, this adds determination not to let this education that we've achieved, this education that you've achieved by coming here for years, to not letting it go to waste, but to accumulate the causes for further excellent rebirths and even accumulate the causes that will lead to enlightenment itself. Because cultivating a path leading to enlightenment is something that everyone here has the capacity to do. What's required is to embrace this opportunity. And to embrace this opportunity that this life presents requires us entering through the doorway into the Dharma. And to do so requires reflection, repeated reflection on this topic. Ah, yeah. And then, yeah, then Lama Tsongkhapa continues, apart from that, um, yeah, apart from that, life itself is involved in the reality of death, so that many conditions for life are unreliable. And then Lama Tsongkhapa quotes from the Precious Garland. There are many conditions for death, while those for living are only a few, and even they may well be deadly. Therefore, always practice the Dharma. <laughs> Apart from that, so this refers to what's been presented above, that there are so many causes that can potentially lead to our death, both those which are animate and those which are inanimate. But moreover, so apart from that, moreover, life itself is involved in the re reality of death, so that many conditions for life are unreliable. So we engage in a number of, of um, accumulation of causes to try and sustain our life, and this is indispensable. But these same co uh, causes that we accumulate can lead to our death. So even the conditions required for supporting life can lead to our death. Uh, 
ตุงกะมังทาบาลาสบาลจิจินจินเนี่ยนะดินิกินจีกุเพ่งกินจุดดนาลีเรดเพ่งบิชิดุเพ่งกวดีเนี่ยดิสาทามาชิงบาตามัง
and the fourth line, therefore, so therefore, is this recognition. Therefore, because our situation is so unstable, and whilst because of this uh, instability in a, with our situation, we must do what we can, but with the recognition that even whilst we try to sustain our life, that this is not reliable or definite. So therefore, before death comes, always practice the Dharma. And here, understand always practice the Dharma to mean accumulate, in other words, strengthen our habituation to wholesome, virtuous ways of thinking, and purify, in other words, break our habituation to unwholesome, afflicted ways of thinking. This needs to be the focus before our death comes. That the very essence of what is being presented is that the time and manner of our death is completely uncertain. So therefore, this incredible opportunity that we've each achieved of this precious human rebirth, we must utilize well, in particular through accumulation and purification. So by engaging in this, this meditation, our mind will always be mindful and alert and our Dharma practice will become sincere. So engaging in this meditation again and again it will arise ever more quickly. And then one can embark on, on uh, the other meditations that one usually engages in. For example, the recognition that just like I want to be happy and free of problems and difficulties, so too do all beings. Therefore, every being that I encounter today, and in fact, every being that I even think of, I will be aware that no matter what they are doing or saying, they only want to be happy. They don't want to suffer. And therefore, the way I interact with all beings, both directly and indirectly, will be with this understanding that this person only wants to be happy. And wherever I can, I will enhance that happiness. I will ensure that where I have the capacity, I will give of myself, I will be of benefit to them. And this is cultivating the mind of generosity. And moreover, I will ensure I do not harm others, I don't add to their burden or suffering. Whoever I encounter, whoever I speak to, whoever I think of, Whatever they are doing is motivated by wish for happiness. I will not impede their happiness. I will not add to their burden or suffering. Therefore, this is the mind of ethics. I will not harm others through my physical behavior, my way of speaking, or my way of thinking. And moreover, I will cultivate the 
the uh, special ethical conduct of, of the Bodhisattva, which is to always hold others as dear and ensure that one is not dominated by a self-centered attitude. So to present this topic in a nutshell is the recognition that there are so many causes that can lead to death. These surround us. And by reflecting on this again and again, we come to recognize how remarkable it is that we are still here. Therefore, we need to use this life well, because not only are we surrounded by so many causes that can lead to death, there are very few that can sustain life. And even those can and do harm people, can and do lead to death. And when death comes, for all us ordinary beings, our karma dictates where our next rebirth will be, either the lower realms or once again in the higher realms. Therefore, I must focus on accumulation and purification. So then we can conclude there for this morning. But if you have some questions, then please feel free to, to ask. Then today there are many options for lunch, so enjoy your lunch.